Welcome to Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. Today's guest is Mr. Gary Lewis, who is the CEO of Resourceify. Hey, Gary. Hi. Hi. It's very nice to be here, Corey. I really appreciate you coming on. We met in a recent uh, panel about uh, packaging and sustainability over there. In For which you got up at around two o'clock in the morning, if I remember, so speak correctly. I was not fully awake, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, miss, our friend, our mutual friend, Connor Hill, asked me to be a part of that. And I always say, do my best to be there for him. And so that was great that we got to meet, but I, I'm excited to talk about you and and resourceify. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got here? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so a warm, a warm hello to everyone, first of all. So I'm Gary. I'm a child of the world. Maybe one can say that. I was born in England. I grew up in New Zealand and I've been living in Germany for the last, almost coming up on 10 years now, which is a, it's a scary number. Yeah. I love technology. I love sustainability. My background is in engineering. Yeah, I studied studied that and worked in the shipping industry after afterwards. Uh, that gave me the opportunity to see a lot, do a lot. I think I've worked in in over sixty countries during that time period. Spent a lot of time in shipyards and had a very unique window in into the world. Actually, I mean, over ninety percent of the world's goods are transported, you know, via via shipping. So uh, I didn't know that. I, I had a, yeah, it's it's fascinating when you when you have a window into that. I also worked in the oil and gas sector, something that I'm not hugely proud about, I have to say. So I've seen the devil and <laughs> wanted to do something. Wanted right. to do something about sometimes that. you have so, to do some things like that to to see the real the real cause and effect there. And I think so that, like you said, you've seen the dark side and it's welcome back to the 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 part of the world where we're solving those problems. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you well yeah. you're certainly doing your part and we're, oh, we're you. trying to do that as well yeah so so i i sort of quit that sector and moved to germany that was around that time and i had a bit of time to think about basically what i wanted to do what i wanted to spend my time on i actually came up with sort of three goals actually for my life and uh the first of those was really supporting to create a circular economy and now that's something I'm really, really passionate about. Some might say obsessed, uh, in the same <laughs> way that, you know, you have your logo there and your face on it. I feel the same about the circular economy and uh, yeah, you know, uh, recycling is, is a huge part, if not, you know, one of the biggest parts about circularity and it's going to play a huge role in hitting our climate targets and, and, and you know, 1.5 degrees, hopefully. So I wanted to do something about that. I wanted to be part of that. And all of that led on to the creation of, of Resourceify. And uh, yeah, that, that's where we are now. Well, tell us about Resourceify, because I think it's a fascinating business that you've started. Can you tell us what you do? Sure. And I, I love the way you say Resourceify, you know, because we're, we're, we're based in Germany and there's some different pronunciations we hear on this. So I, I love that rolling of your tongue. <laughs> oh, good. Um, yeah, we're, that's my we're Oregon commercial... accent. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. We're a commercial waste management and recycling platform which is way more exciting than that sounds. So what we do is <laughs> we help companies bring their zero waste visions to life. You've got a lot of educated listeners, which, you know, we listen to your podcast. So I would, you, you could imagine us like a, like a European Rubicon. So yeah, we want to create something that's say like a reverse Amazon, something which really brings us forward as a society. And what we do is, is we help companies with more sustainable waste management. So we work together with some of the biggest companies in Europe, like, you know, like McDonald's, Johnson Johnson, Fraport. I mean, I could name a lot of names now, but I think yeah. some of your American listeners uh, might not, might not know them, but they're, they're big companies, big waste producers. And what we have is, is this operational platform for, for managing recycling, which is a very, you know, complicated topic. So things like orders, contracts, documentation, reporting, and everything, which basically sets then a very solid foundation for then going on and optimizing your waste management and that's that's what we do so yeah we we help companies really digitize waste management and use that as a stepping stone into becoming more innovative with the waste management into resource management you know and kind of go go on that journey fully digital transparent centralized but sustainable and that's important yeah that's the that's the whole thing right and we're excited about how you're helping companies move forward in the right direction and not eliminating waste, but handling it correctly as uh, I think that's where we have to start. 
and and then you're taking them to the next level which is even better and providing some numbers to them like hey last year you did this this year you did that is that right is it kind of you're setting a primer and then you're and then you're able to analyze off of that yeah absolutely you know and Corey, if you could uh, say a few words about you know how that works also in the packaging space because that's yep. you know that's very that's one niche of what we do and we we have all these you know we have over I think uh, 260 waste streams and counting over the platform. So packaging is obviously a very big, very important vertical of that. But the question we try and answer is just really how do companies increase their recycling rates? And, yeah. you know, not in 10 years, but, but now, what can they right. do now to stop burning? What can they do now to, yeah, I mean, luckily in Europe, landfilling is not such a thing anymore, but you know, it's answering that question and, and how do we answer that with economics? How do we make it cheaper, faster, better? And our answer to that is obviously through, through digitization and using that to really unlock the opportunities of, of the market. Yeah. So I've had a couple of experiences recently that I wanted to talk through with you. One, yes. I was at a, a sandwich shop, not really fast food, but a sandwich shop and a global chain. Mm -hmm. And their waste receptacle had a small hole for recycle and a large hole for trash. And you look down in there and they both go in the same bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, it made me think no. of you because I think there's a, that's a lot of what happens in the world right now, unfortunately. And I think that's where you guys can come in and say, listen, we're going to provide you the two bins or show you how to buy the two bins and what to do with those materials once they're in the bins. Is, is that pretty accurate? Well, I, I would love to even uh, understand that deeper. I mean, yeah. we don't want to name drop here, but uh, I mean, no. uh, that's, that sounds terrible. Is that, is that the case everywhere no. that you see, or is that, that an abnormality, would you say? <laughs> it's, uh, I would say it's becoming less frequent, which mm -hmm. is really good. I think it's getting to a point where there's even almost too many cans and so people don't understand them, how they work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was at the airport recently. I don't remember which one I've been traveling quite a bit lately. And uh, somebody dropped something into something that said recycle and it was definitely not recycling mm -hmm. material. And this is where the big issue comes, right? How do we sort it once it gets in the wrong bin. But I think you, what your program does is more make it easier for the brand and the company to break that material in the facility and then ship it to the right areas. Is that, is that kind of more what you do along with the digital reporting? Yeah. So that goes in the right direction. I mean, there's two things that we see. I mean, there's a couple of mega trends that you're touching on there. Obviously we have kind of and, 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 and the jury is not out, which of these are better, right? So right. we see uh, in Europe, um, in Germany, for example, uh, a reverse trend away, especially in consumer areas. Fraub, well, you mentioned airports, right? I'm going to mention airports, the Fraport airport, you know, they were separating hundreds of hundreds, but many things for consumers. Also at all of the German train stations, they had separation on every, every sort of what are these things called? Gleiser. Everywhere a train comes in, right? <laughs> it's everywhere. Oh, as well, I think we would call it. Yeah, that. something like yeah. this. They were separating, you know, five, and it's not many, right? But five things everywhere. And actually they, they, they went away from that. They went to one single collection thing because what they realized was you need education. Education is part of this. And they actually started to do post sorting. So they said, you know what, we have so much contamination. Nobody's throwing the right things in the, in, in the right bins here in a public scenario that they will actually, you know, do sorting afterwards. And this can be very effective. We see that also in a, in a large city where I'm currently Hamburg, you know, they've introduced what's called kind of a valuable a container where, where you can throw really many things in there. And then they have a very good sorting facility, which sorts all sort of that out. So that's one trend, which I would, I would say, I see at least in the consumer area to just make things easier. But we see interestingly the opposite, and that's the other trend. We see the opposite for businesses. And quite frankly, right now for businesses, it's just too hard, too difficult to recycle things. And the reason there is not so much the actual separation. It is the administration, it's the effort, it's the contracting, it's the tracking, it's the payments, it's everything around that which makes that hard but the actual separation is, is is easy so we have some customers which separate over 80 different waste streams wow now, that sounds like a lot but we're talking here about a facility where 
it, it's huge. They have over 10,000 employees working on this one facility. And if you have the right container at the right place, and you put one of these lids on it, right, <laughs> where you show, okay, this should go right. in there, as you mentioned, then, you know, you get around this. So we see these two trends. I think the jury's not out, which is going to be the better one, but I guess in, at the end, a mixture of both. But yeah, your question was, what do we do? How do we support that? I mean, ultimately we want a circular economy, right? So how do we, how do we get there? We get there by closing the loop. And what does that mean? So it basically means that everything which we have should in one way or the other, get back to wherever it came from to be reused for whatever it should be in the future. And that means collecting and that means transporting and that means whatever it means, processing or shredding and then reusing. But so containers, what do you have? Where does it go? And we, I, I believe very strongly in this. I think in the future, we will see thousands of different types of waste being collected. We have it already. You just don't think about it. So right. batteries, phones, Apple has their own, you know, recycling program and this and that. And we will have this in the future for all products, I believe. And you need a way to manage that. You need to, a way to make sure that's easy and fast and simple. And, um, we, we will end up there one way or the other, uh, we think. So yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Uh, we need a way to manage that. And that's what we do. We have this operational system for managing this complexity and making it just as easy to recycle one thing as it is to recycle hundreds of things by just basically doing it correctly. Right. And doing it the first time. And like you said, not having to sort it again, making sure the education is there first before you put the bin or saying, forget the education, let's, we're really good at sorting. So let's put it all in one bin. So I like those two tracks. I think they're both very valuable. And I think there's a lot of companies, most companies are trying to become zero waste. And it's exciting to, that's what I was so excited to interview you because I think this is such a valuable, you know, service that you're providing. And I think a lot of companies will, will be reaching out to you almost in a panic because eventually it'll just say, you know, Hey, the government will say, you got to be zero waste. That's right now. So it's coming. It's <laughs> yeah. coming. Yeah. yeah. We're seeing it with the, all the kinds of The question there is probably laws. what's the definition, right? right? So, I mean, what, what's your definition? What's your definition for zero waste? That'd be very interesting. Oh yeah. I think, well, I think it's zero waste to landfill. And I think that's mm -hmm. the, that's the full definition is your, your company is not delivering anything into the trash it's mm -hmm. a, it's it's sorting with the intent of recycling or composting and or reusing and i think that's where zero waste becomes so valuable is we're just not dumping it into the landfill it's that's not sustainable long term mm -hmm. i i heard someone saying we're running out of room in the landfills which i i don't know if that's accurate yet but i'm sure it will be eventually and it just makes positive sense to stop mining raw materials when we can reuse what we have, in my opinion. And it's already there, right? So if we look at those main material streams, with let's, let's take paper, paper, incredible example of what a circular economy can be. So, so yeah, it's definitely, definitely feasible. I mean, I would, and that's super interesting. I think it's really interesting, right? So I would, I would, I think Europe, I'm not speaking for Europe here. I'm not going to take that position, but uh, I would that's say- That's a big step, yeah. That's a big step. Yeah. Yeah. No one can do that. There is- No. No, <laughs> no one can do that. Yeah. Let's leave politics aside though. Yeah. Basically, I, I would stretch that definition. I would say that zero waste means material reusage. So landfilling is, you know, one thing, but burning, we need to stop right. the burning. Uh, yeah, I think. And, you know, if you stop landfilling and that's happening in Europe, a lot of things then end up in incineration. And someone will probably comment on this if they listen and say incineration is fantastic. It's, there's two levels, you know, you were talking about thermal recovery is, is the buzzword. So it means you get energy back out from it. Yes, I understand that. But, you know, if we burn everything, there's nothing left. That's kind of my very basic point here. Yeah. So I would, I would stretch that. But of course, I mean, if you're, you know, thermal recovery is better than landfill, absolutely. But material reusage is better than, than everything. So, yeah. Yeah, I think of, you know, the burning for fuel and, and the things like that that people are doing, the incineration. And it reminds me of that movie, The Lorac, you know, where they're just cutting the tree, cutting the tree, cutting the tree. And it just, at a certain point, we're out of trees and, you know, we're not, why would we do that when we can recycle or reuse? You know, just 
you know, yeah. to me, I think you and I are on the same page there, but I understand that there is positive, you know, if, if the alternative is landfill, if that's the only other option, then yeah, let's use that material for energy. But I agree. I think long-term uh, sustainable is uh, recycling and reuse. Yeah. Yes. And if anyone wants to, to debate that, I would say, let's start talking about Easter Island and go from there. <laughs> right. Very, very good. Very good point. Well, can you tell us a, a story of a time when your company, you felt like, hey, we made a really big impact there or, or a funny story, if you would rather do that. Recycling is, is many things, but it's rarely funny. So True. I don't have too yeah. many fall into that basket. Yeah. <laughs> Can you think of a time when you advised a company and it was a really big impact? You just felt like, okay, that we made a big difference there. I, yeah. I mean, of course I want to say now, everyone that we, we <laughs> worked with has had right. that delightful experience, but it's always a similar journey that we see. Yeah. Good. Uh, so you can imagine it like this. Before Resourcify, what's the status quo? The status quo is big companies have complicated, expensive waste management. It's expensive because it's complicated and vice versa. Right. Um, and they have one recycler that does everything because that's what you need. You need someone who says, I will take care of this. But what these guys do is they do a lot of subcontracting. So they don't actually do stuff. It's the classic kind of middleman thing. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, most companies before resource, you have one recycler that does everything and to take a very bad example, right? They burn everything. Uh, that's not hundred percent true. It's an oversimplification, but still, if we want to get to a net zero society, that means we need to be treating all of our resources in a fantastic way. And that means collection and, and, and therefore complexity. So before resource, by one recycler, after resource, you know, we, we have a uh, Hornbach to take an example. It's a, it's a retail chain in, in Europe. They're in around six European countries. They have now over a hundred recyclers. I think it's around 116 recyclers. So at many facilities, multiple recyclers for multiple resource streams, they've integrated take back systems. They've integrated reuse systems, circular, circular loops almost uh, for what they're selling. And they're doing all of that with the same team that they had before. So no, they didn't have to hire anyone else. They didn't have any extra costs, no more efforts. They now also have fully digital insights into what they produce, where it goes, who gets it, what they pay or what they earn. And uh, oh, they yeah. earn a Good lot point. of money, yeah. uh, especially with the paper prices at the moment. Yeah. So the goal was more recycling and we supported them with that. It was a great partnership. They also helped us a lot, but yeah, more recycling, less administration. And it's always a similar story. Companies are often on this journey of, uh, and figuring out what to do. And, and they go from, you know, waste management to, to recycling, to, to really resource management. And where we all want to see them in the future is circularity, which means whatever that means for everyone. Right. So Different. Yeah, it's always, it's yeah. always a similar, similar journey that we see. Yeah. And, and you can save costs, right? So the ultimate effect is you save 30, 40% of your costs, which is huge which you can reinvest if you want back into doing cool things around circularity, recycling and uh, initiatives like, like this. Yeah. Or hire more employees to make more of your product or yeah. To grow your business. Uh, yeah. I'd love yeah. it. Yeah. Well done. Are you guys only in Europe right now? Or are you international? We are only in Europe, so Europe, you know, you've got a lot of languages, you've got a lot of borders, you've got a lot of requirements. We have the European waste regulation, which dictates how things should work in Europe. So we have a common market, but we are operationally only, only serving, serving Europe. The reason for that is because it just works here. And yeah. if you have a market, let's take a market, maybe somewhere else in, in, in Asia, where you might not have a commercial market, you might not have commercial recyclers or, or, or facilities or things like that. It's, you don't need such a, an operating system that, that we offer. I would make maybe even the case in, a, in, in the States that it's not necessary depending, depending on the individual markets, right? So if you take a place in, you know, in the middle of your great country, it's, it, maybe there's not so, so many opportunities. There are so many different facilities where you can get your stuff. And we don't have those type of problems in Europe. We have by our estimates, you know, around 20, 25,000 waste management companies spread across Europe. Wow. So in our city alone, there, there's 45 different commercial recyclers. We're 1 million people here. 
So we're talking recycling at a different scale in Europe. So that's why we're focusing here, first of all. Yes. That seems like a lot. Isn't that a lot? It just seems, but I don't know. I guess I don't have a, a, a measure. Maybe our recycling companies are larger and more more national. Yeah, I don't want to pretend to be an expert on the American. Yeah, I've never looked at those numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I I think it will be vastly more, many more in the future. If we really oh, yeah. think about what needs to happen, this sector, I guess, will, will be growing a lot. So I, I agree. And the ones that are there will grow and, and be more efficient and more able to handle more different kinds of materials and things like that too. So yes, yes. yeah, very true. The future we want to see. Yeah. Are, are the issues similar, different countries, or do you find like in Germany, this happens and in this country, this happens, or do you get educated as you go into different countries about the different systems? Italy potentially being on one extreme of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's just say, I mean, to answer your question. So yeah. companies use a lot of resources, full stop. It doesn't matter where you are, what company you are. If you have a thousand people working somewhere, you will use or consume a lot. And that's okay. You know, if you handle this, the, your, what you've got, okay. It's like money, right? If, if you have a lot, but you spend a lot, you have a pro. <laughs> if you have a lot of resources, Very but true. you use them the correct way, you know, then that's fine. So we see, a, obviously, this is the similarity. That is true in every country, no matter where you are in the world. In Europe, we use a lot of resources. In Germany, we use a lot of resources. You know, last year we used around, I think, 1 1.6, 1.7 billion tons of raw materials. We only got wow. back around 200 million tons of that via recycling. So already in Germany, which is, I would say, quite advanced wow. with the recycling, there is a long way to go. And that's true everywhere. So anywhere where resources are used, they can be reused. And that's the issue, I think, which that's the baseline issue, which countries have and the regulations within the markets define how that problem should be solved. But from an operational level, you have materials that should be picked up and delivered somewhere and reused. This is the same, no matter where you are, I would say. Well said, and it's such a simple, but so big, such a large concept that needs to be embraced by the world, I think. Yeah. Yes. So what's next? We, we want to get all your contact information out to everybody. How, how can people reach you? I'm very reactive over LinkedIn. So yep. if you want to get in touch or share, share some hate messages with me about what I said <laughs> today, feel free to do that. Let's, let's have a debate. Yeah. I, I'm available on LinkedIn. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Gary. We really appreciate your time. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Well, I love packaging as well. I mean, I would have loved to have discussed packaging more, but yeah, I think yeah. this is also such a huge topic. I'm a big fan of the show. I'm really a big fan of yeah, what thank you're you, doing and the awareness you're bringing to this topic, which is in and of itself absolutely huge. And yeah, Tom was on the show last week. That's a huge moment for you. So just wish you a lot of success, maybe as yeah. uh, closing words, Corey, from my side about the awareness you're bringing to, to this recycling topic. I think it's really, really important and packaging, obviously sustainable packaging, an absolutely huge part at the beginning yeah. of the loop here that right. we need to solve. Right. And design for the end of the loop and, or the return to the beginning, uh, yeah. designing packaging to be reused, designing packaging to be recycled. I think, and it's such an honor to get to get to interview people like you, Gary, and and Tom Zaki, and and Frederick Drew from Unilever, and all of these people. Are amazing! I'm just, it just feels so thrilled to be a part of this community of sustainable people. So, thank you for your time, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, then wish you a fantastic day. You too, sir. Thank you, Landsberg Aurora, for sponsoring the podcast. And if you're listening, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you so much.